So I worked on a video slash project a couple days ago where I wanted to build a peer-to-peer -peer messaging system. And what that basically means is that you have a system where you can spin up a local running service on your laptop and you can try to send a message to someone else who happens to be part of this network as well. Now the trick to building a peer-to-peer -peer network, and again, I'm not an expert in this stuff, I'm just trying to learn more about it, is you have to basically have some type of system that will look up and cache where these destination nodes are, right? So if, for example, if I wanted to send a message from seven, so let, let's say these nodes represent like people's laptops and they are hosting like an express server on these laptops, right? So if I wanted to send a message from seven all the way to zero, I would have to have seven ask one of the nodes that it's aware of. And then that node has to go and look up another node. And then that node has to go and look up another node. So if you think about like death first search or breath first search, you kind of have to traverse the entire graph until you find node zero, right? So this video, I want to kind of share the visualization part of this that I worked on to make sure that the algorithm I was implementing in my project was actually like decent. And this is the first iteration of the algorithm. I tried to basically set it up. So when this thing loads, let me go ahead and increase the timeout. So what you're looking at here is a visualization of a node and basically it traversing the graph to find the destination node. And this is all using a view library called V network graph. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's really easy to get going. You can basically visualize nodes and graphs and you can, you can modify the nodes and like put labels and customize the colors. Definitely check it out. Um, and I've really been using Vue a lot more and I really like Vue. But anyway, so I, I built that out so that I can kind of visualize, hey, the thing that I coded, is it actually solid? And like, do I actually fully understand like how these, these, these nodes like communicate and talk to each other? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh the page and the algorithm basically spins up random 50 nodes. And then every node, it randomly connects to another node so that the two nodes know about each other. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that node 16 knows about node 12 and node 12 understands that node 16 is over here, right? So there's some type of table that these services have or some type of um, map that basically points a node ID and then like an IP address, right? So the visualization is like, can I basically spin up this graph, kind of randomly connect these nodes together and have zero find one, right? So if you look over here, there is a graph, there, there is a node of one. And the goal of this is like, can I have node zero, which I believe is right here, there's node zero. Can I get node zero to find node one? And you'll see the lines turn red as it's traversing the graph. And at some point when it finds node one, you'll see it basically update its own dictionary and point every node that it traversed to know where node one is, right? So unfortunately, sometimes when I refresh the page, the, there's different like spaces of the network, but you'll see it started up here, node zero, and it's kind of traversing the entire graph until it finds node one, which is over here, right? So when this thing is found, you'll see it connect all the nodes together. And now all the nodes that it had to take for that path now know about where node one is. So again, I made this visualization to like verify, am I doing the, the logic correct in my peer-to-peer -peer network to make sure my stuff is connected. And it helped me visualize that, hey, there is something that I didn't even think about. Like if you don't have these nodes fully connected and like all these nodes don't know about each other, you could potentially have disconnected partial graphs, which is not, I guess you could say partial network. Of course, when I'm trying to show you it, it's not happening. But every so often when I refresh the page, there'll be two completely disconnected networks. For example, this one where zero is not able to find one in some cases because one happens to be in this network and zero happens to be over in this network. But luckily they were able to find each other because they live in the same network. And I was having like a discussion on my Discord with another uh, member where basically you could have your own private cluster where only your friends could ever send messages to each other and no one else could join this cluster. But that's kind of like outside of the scope of why I did this visualization. I just wanted to make sure that what I was doing is correct. And it made me realize that, hey, there's a chance that you could have partial networks that are like not connected. So you need to make sure that if you're doing a peer-to-peer -peer network, you have like a fully connected graph where this thing will not potentially happen, right? You really don't want the scenario where you can't find your user because he happens to be like disconnected completely. So it made me realize that, hey, my visualization is actually wrong because the way I'm setting up my seed nodes in my peer-to-peer -peer network is every seed server knows about every other seed server. So let me go ahead and show you like what this should actually look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this 
this is how a peer-to-peer network in my from what I understand should look like, right? So all these things are your seed nodes, right? You have all these nodes and all the seed nodes know where the other seed nodes are. So everything is like fully connected. So you don't have a chance that you have like this, this graph that's like split up in the different regions that aren't knowing about each other. And so by doing this, basically any new node, when they were to register to one of these seed nodes, you're guaranteed that like anyone else can probably find that peer who just connected. Um, let me go ahead and just change this up a little bit. I'll change it to three seconds. And I want to go ahead and increase how many nodes we have. I'll go ahead and change the number of nodes to 30. So it gets a little crazy. Okay, 30 is actually lagging my computer. So <laughs> let me change it to 20. Um, there we go. So it looks a little bit better. So this is the same simulation as before, but I just kind of initialized the edges to properly kind of demonstrate how all the seed nodes know about each other. Um, and the idea is that, again, node zero is trying to figure out the location of node one. And the way it does that is it basically sends a message to any of its seed nodes and say, hey, do you know where node one is? And then that seed node sends a message to all of its connected neighbors Find us figure out, hey, I don't know where one is, so let's go ahead and ask everyone else that I know about where is one. And then those basically, you'll see the lines that goes from like one red line to 13, and then 13 fans out to every other seed node. And then finally at some point, like that fans out even more, which is why it turns the entire graph red. And then finally, if, like you're able to find node one and it'll connect zero to one. And now zero completely knows about where one is and all the other nodes that we had to traverse along the way know where node one is now so it's like it's a much more efficient system because if anyone were to ask node four where node one is it would just have to go straight there it, it wouldn't have to do this whole like flooding of the network right okay so let's, let's do it again so zero it asks four like where is one and then every single node that four is connected to asks every single neighbor that they know about where node one is and at some point the message will go back and in the system that i built there's some type of logic in place where I attach a unique ID to every request in the header so that you don't have this like infinite request going on, right? Because if you didn't check if like the request ID has already been seen, every node would basically just keep going back and forth and basically bring your whole network down, right? Just an infinite loop of just sending requests to every neighbor. And again, like I'm not an expert at this stuff. I'm just playing around having some fun. I think this is a great way to like get better at programming is just find something that you're kind of interested in, something that sparks your curiosity and just try to build it. Try to like do a proof of concept. And when it comes to visualization stuff, like D3 and you know this view thing is actually pretty fun to play with. But I just wanted to share, share that with you all. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, show it one more time. Zero asks node four where one is. And then all these nodes ask each other where one is. One of them happens to find it. And then now the entire network caches the, uh, the location. Now, obviously I'm not gonna like go through the code because like it's, I basically just copy and paste an example. And then the logic I had to figure out was just how to set up all these, these edges, right? So basically had to loop through all the seed nodes and then loop over again, and then basically create edges so that one node knows about where the other node is and vice versa. Um, and then I have some logic to basically loop through um, this kind of simulation and just wait for three seconds and then turn the edge red as I'm like stepping through. So I don't know. I just want to share with you all just to kind of highlight a fact that like if there's something cool you want to play with in code or like prototype with, just go do it because it's going to help you understand stuff a little bit better. Again, like I'm not an expert at this stuff. So what I'm sharing with you in this video could be completely wrong. And if you're an expert in like peer to peer networks, me out in the the comments but for me like we often talk in a lot of abstracts when it comes to software engineering and just having some type of visualization whether it's like some type of uh simulation like i just showed you so you can really understand like what's going on or just even drawing some sequence diagrams or diagrams in general just really help drive the point home of like what you're trying to learn and um what you're trying to do Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little like experimentation video. I feel like I'm back in college, like doing some some research for undergrad, but I enjoy doing this. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel that you're welcome to message me directly if you want, or just find a place to hang out with some other developers. If you're stuck with JavaScript and you just want to find a place to get some help. Like always, have a good day and happy coding.